One of my favorite free and open source games is a real-time strategy game called Zero AD. I've played it many times on live streams on my channel in the past. You guys have probably seen me play Zero AD if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while. And it's just a gorgeous game. It's just beautifully done. You would almost think it's one of these triple uh, A gaming titles, but it's actually free and open source software. It's licensed under the GPL, all the artwork and the fantastic music that's in the game. All of that is licensed under Creative Commons license, so it's completely free and open source. And Zero AD just released Alpha 24, and this is a huge release for Zero AD. Major game changes, major improvements in the graphics and uh, the gameplay, a lot of bug fixes. And today I wanted to show you guys some of what you can expect in the recently released Zero AD Alpha 24. And just opening up the game, I can tell you immediately there's some new opening artwork here. When you first load up the game, this uh, this artwork here, the picture was different on the previous version. Again, this is a new release. They haven't really had a new release in a couple of years, so this is a very big update. I do like the new artwork. I'm going to go into my settings and into options, and I want to go to graphics. And I have turned on all of my graphics to the highest settings because I want to push this thing a little bit for purposes of this video. Now, if you're playing online multiplayer you may want to turn some of the effects off for better performance but for purposes of this video I'm gonna set all of that to the maximums and I got an error here when I tried to open a game here I'm gonna do a single player game I'm just gonna start a game against the AI here now one of the things people that are familiar with Zero AD will notice is that there's some new maps. All the old maps that you're used to are here, but they now include some new ones. One that jumped out at me immediately was this farmland map. And I'm going to go ahead and start the game here so you guys can see this new farmland map because it really highlights some of the graphical improvements of this game. For one thing, all of the characters now, all the artwork has been redone. These women now, they, they look completely different than what they looked previously in the game. Same thing yeah, with yeah, the men. Did. And it looks like uh, they even vary what the men yeah, look like, even though they're all the same type of soldier. I'll zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see that a little bit. And the artwork is really improved, especially when it comes to the plants, the flora. So all the trees and the bushes are just are incredible. They look so much better than they did in the previous version of the game. And the previous version of the game looked good. Like if you had showed Alpha 23 to people, they would have been blown away by it. They would have swore that there was no way this is a free and open source game. And they've taken those effects and just made them even better. Again, the game looks gorgeous. It's very smooth, even on the highest settings here. My graphics card is an AMD Radeon 7, so I've got a pretty beefy graphics card. And I've got a pretty beefy CPU here. I've got an AMD 12424 thread Threadripper. So uh, my machine is a bit of a beast. One of the other things that they've changed in the game, those of you that have played the game, now the buildings used to, the buildings you could place wherever, and sometimes it was hard to get buildings placed exactly yeah, yeah, where you want. Now they have a snap kind of feature for the buildings where you can snap them in place. So if I did control and then you know put it right up to the next building, it put it exactly up butt it up to the next building so there's no gaps of any kind because in the previous versions of the game you would always have little gaps and because you could never get it exactly butted up next to the building and if you left gaps in between the buildings sometimes your characters got trapped in between the buildings and that always annoyed me because then you had to get creative on how you freed that character if that character could actually be garrisoned in that building and sometimes you could garrison them and then ungarrison them to uh, get <laughs> ungarrison them to get them out of that trap or sometimes you would just have to destroy the building you built just so you could free your character and this map here is a new map called Atlas Valleys and it looks gorgeous this map I love the shadowing and the shading and everything it's just just amazing the improvements the graphic improvements from one version of the game to the next. Now one neat little AI improvement they did, I have my population posted here at the top, it says 9 of 20. 20 is my max population, the, the population limit currently, and I only have 9 citizens. So, But one neat thing is if I grab all the women here and I send them to cut wood, 
you see I have four showing off to the side here. That four is telling me out of my nine citizens, I have four currently working, which means five of them are not doing anything. So that's a good way to immediately spot when you have idle workers. That means yeah, I need to go find the idle workers and get them to doing something because yeah, in this game, being a real-time strategy game, you never want any workers idle because any downtime is just putting you at a disadvantage compared to your opponents because I promise you, your opponents in this game, they're not having any downtime at all. Let's go ahead and check out one more of the new maps. This one here is called Obedska Bog. It looks like it's a naval map. I do like naval maps. And this is another uh, temperate climate map. And uh, again, it looks gorgeous. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see some of the artwork as far as the women here chopping the wood, taking it to the storehouse. One interesting effect that they did here in Alpha 24, those of you that like to play multiplayer, in Zero AD in multiplayer, it's a good idea to set population limits because as your population grows, as these very large armies grow, it slows down the game. There is noticeable lag once you get an army of 2, 250, 300 players. So typically in multiplayer in Zero AD, you set a pop max of 200, tends to be the standard. Sometimes they set it as 150. So imagine in an eight player game, you have a 150 pop max. That means each of the eight players can have a maximum of 150 citizens. Well, in Alpha 24, you now have what is called a world pop limit that you can set. The world pop limit means as players are eliminated, their share of the world population limit gets redistributed amongst the remaining players. So in an eight player game, you start with everybody having a max pop of 150. Say you get down to only having two players remaining, those two players would have a 600 pop limit because of, of the added population of them eliminating the other players. I hope that makes sense. And looking at some of the other maps, uh, Vesuvius, this is a new map and it's actually a volcano. <laughs> and it looks like it's colored in this weird uh, like reddish hue that is kind of cool too i'll definitely uh, check that out in my spare time that might be a, a map i play this evening one of the things that the zero ad team spent a lot of time on for this release is they really wanted to rebalance some of the civilizations because you've got about you know, 12 or 14 civilizations within the game to choose from and some of them are much weaker than others so there needed to be some kind of leveling of the civilizations because there were three or four civilizations in the game that are just way overpowered and then there's three or four civilizations in the game that are very underpowered some of the changes to the late game include that your fortresses no longer can train soldiers so that's really interesting because it really means that your fortresses now become more of a defensive structure rather than an offensive structure because in previous versions of the game you built as a ton of fortresses and you typically built them on the front line so you could spam out soldiers that's no longer the case another thing is your heroes now they can only be trained once per game so you really need to pick and choose exactly when you want to train that hero overall this looks like this is a fantastic release for zero ad for those of you that want to try out the absolute latest zero ad it's free and open source software so it's probably in your linux distributions repositories if you're on a rolling release distro alpha 24 is already there i know it's already there in arch and in most arch based distros if for some reason that you, you can't get the latest version of zero ad in your Linux distros repositories, you can just go to the play0ad.com website. I will link to their website in the show description. And uh, I should also mention that 0AD is a cross-platform game. I keep mentioning, mentioning Linux, but it's not just for Linux. You can actually play 0AD on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Absy, Dallas, Gay, Blue, Mitchell, Allen, Akami, Arch5530, Chuck, David, The Other David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Scott, Wes, and Willie. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick first look at 0 AD Alpha 24 wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. Without you guys, I couldn't do what I do. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.